Hey everybody, Jason Turpak coming to you again with a follow-up video to my video why I left Eastern Orthodoxy. Got a lot of feedback, positive and otherwise, which showed me that we need to have more videos like this. So thanks to all of your comments and all of your feedback. Hope you enjoy this one. We're going to start out briefly uh, by looking at what the Orthodox teaches regarding the Eucharist. Okay, But this video is going to talk about what the Eucharist is not. Got the one of the older editions of the Orthodox Church uh, by Timothy Ware, but his name became Callistos. He became a priest and a bishop and a metropolitan archbishop. Page 274, we read these words. At baptism, the Christian undergoes an outward washing in water and is at the same time cleansed inwardly from sin. At the Eucharist, he or she receives what appears from the visible point of view to be bread and wine, but in reality is the body and blood of Christ. And we can stop there, but to make sure we're not misunderstanding, Callistos, uh, we have page 283, near the bottom, the presence of Christ in the Eucharist. As the words of the Epiclesis make abundantly plain, the Orthodox Church believes that after consecration, the bread and wine become, in very truth, the body and blood of Christ. They are not mere symbols, but the reality. But while Orthodoxy has always insisted on the reality of the change, it has never attempted to explain the manner of the change. And we'll stop there. You turn the page, one page over, to page 284, near the uh, middle, above a bunch of footnotes. And it says, regarding transubstantiation, this is in the middle of an argument or a discussion, it says, secondly, its use does not commit theologians to the acceptance of Aristotelian philosophical concepts. That is orthodox using the word transubstantiation. The general position of orthodoxy in the whole matter is clearly summed up in the longer catechism written by St. Philaret, Metropolitan of Moscow. 1782 to 1867, and authorized by the Russian Church in 1839. So he's quoting from a very accepted Orthodox catechism. In fact, the uh, Russian Church said, we accept this. Question, <clears throat> how are we to understand the word transubstantiation? Answer, the word transubstantiation is not to be taken to define the manner in which the bread and wine are changed into the body and blood of the Lord. For this none can understand but God, but only thus much is signified, that the bread truly, really, and substantially becomes the very true body and blood of the Lord, and the wine the very blood of the Lord. So it's clear that the Orthodox position, you can look at Nicholas Cabasillus, uh, whoever you want to look at, St. Cyril of Jerusalem, and I'm sure you're going to find uh, ample proof that the Orthodox believe in the change. You can look at the words of the liturgy itself. I was checking that out a couple days ago. You know, make this bread the precious body of thy Christ, and that which is in this cup the precious blood of thy Christ, changing them by thy Holy Spirit. And everybody says, Amen, Amen, Amen. That's what they believe. It's one of the most cardinal doctrines. I'm going to get blown up on Facebook with this one. But let's look at what the scripture says. Let's look at what uh, St. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11. I'm just going to read it, and I'll emphasize a little bit while I'm reading. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, St. Paul, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Verse 26, For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, verse 27, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. I have to stop there. What are we eating? Bread. 
And what's in the cup? Wine. Paul's not calling it something that it's not. He says, who, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. And we're just going to go ahead and stop there. This is after it's already changed. And it actually does change in a way because of the spiritual presence of Christ, which I won't go into. I'm not going to uh, try to put forth what the Eucharist is, but what the Eucharist is not. It's not the receiving of the real body and blood of Jesus where the bread and wine are transformed and become the flesh and blood of Christ. In John 6, Jesus is talking spiritually because he talks about um, believing in him and coming to him. It's not about eating some magically or spiritually changed emblems. And I know Catholics are going to attack me too. That's fine. Look at what the Lord Jesus says in Matthew 26, the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 26, verse uh, 26 will start. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and brake it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. He just consecrated it, whatever that means. And then he says to him, For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins, Verse 29, but I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine. Wine. I will not drink of this wine. Again, until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Anybody who just wants to read the scripture plainly can see what Paul and what Jesus are saying. It's bread and wine. And a couple snippets from early church fathers, since this is what's used even more than anything to convince people, but I'm going to read a couple quotations that they might not use. And uh, you can pick up this book for 25, 30 bucks or so, A Dictionary of Early Christian Beliefs. And then if you have the Roberts and Donaldson set online or in person, you can actually check out the quotations in context. Here we have a quote from Justin Martyr. It says, this prophecy refers to the bread which our Christ gave us to eat. What did Christ give us to eat? Bread. In remembrance of his being made flesh for the sake of his believers, for whom also he suffered. And it refers to the cup which he gave us to drink in remembrance of his own blood with giving of thanks. Interesting. The bread which our Christ gave us to eat. Hmm. Not physical body, not, not body that bread was transformed into, but bread. Then we have Irenaeus. This is my favorite one because pay attention to what he says. Our opinion is in accordance with the Eucharist. And in turn, the Eucharist establishes our opinion. For we offer to him his own, announcing consistently the fellowship and union of the flesh and spirit. For the bread which is produced from the earth, when it receives the invocation of God, is no longer common bread, but the Eucharist. Mm, there's a change, but what is it not? Listen to this. When it receives the invocation of God, is no longer common bread, but the Eucharist consisting of two realities, earthly and heavenly. So also our bodies, when they receive the Eucharist, are no longer corruptible, having the hope of the resurrection to eternity. And we'll finish with the last quote, and then we'll be done. We have uh, Origen. Oh, yeah, Origen the heretic. Well, look it into it. Origen was more influential than people let on. Origen says, we also eat the bread presented to us. What do we eat? The bread 
presented to us. And this bread becomes by prayer a sacred body, which sanctifies those who sincerely partake of it. Then he also says, the last part, another quote from Origen, we have a symbol of gratitude to God in the bread that we call the Eucharist. So what the Eucharist is not, it's not the true body and blood of Christ in some transformed way where the bread and wine become the flesh and blood of Christ and we eat somehow spiritually and carnally of his body and blood, but it's bread and wine that becomes more than bread and wine spiritually, becomes to us the body and blood of Christ, but it's not a corporeal change. It's not a physical change. The bread and wine become more than bread and wine, two realities, earthly and heavenly. That's how I would like to end this video. So hopefully it blesses some of you who have ears to hear, but reread 1 Corinthians 11, reread Matthew uh, 26, check out the early church fathers, plenty of quotes that could lead you uh, to believe the Roman Catholic or Orthodox position, but I think if you look at all of the quotes, you might come up with something quite different. God bless you. Thanks for listening.